Well, ladies and gentlemen, pour yourself a nice big glass of your favorite alcoholic drink because we are in for a treat as we reach issue 10 of the Batman Catwoman comic book that has caused me more pain and more indifference towards Tom King's writing than any other book made. This is, I think, just looking at it from like a publishing standpoint, this is a book that reminds me exactly why not every book should be called Batman. Because, first off, he's not in the book. Second off, <laughs> they're all so shitty and mediocre now. There's too many of them. Make it four titles, not 109. You know, there's just too many Batman books. And this one has not earned its place to stay in existence. We're still talking about it because I made a commitment to you all. And I made a commitment to myself that we will see this thing through to the end. And that end cannot get here soon enough. So I think last month or a couple weeks ago... There was the Christmas special of this book. Didn't read it. It's just a Christmas special. You get it. It's his books. Yeah. Let's get back on track. Okay. Issue 10. What's the song we're singing? I Saw Three Ships. That classic song. We've pretty much reached the end of every good song we had. So there you go. Now, again, this is in three different timelines. We have the past where Selena and the Joker are fighting and she's like, I like Batman. I'm going to work for him now. We have the present timeline where Selena is fighting the Joker and she's like, I like Batman, but I'm not his little lackey. And we have the future where Selena is fighting her daughter. And she's like, you don't get it. I am your dad's lackey. And it was, oh man, painful. So <laughs> let's, let's try to break this down. First off too, I should say, Clay Man is back. He was on hiatus for three issues four issues a little bit he was gone for a bit Liam Sharp filled in I think it looked atrocious and it did not serve the book justice this clay man art we're back to seeing nice shots of Selena from behind because in every issue she's either in her underwear or we have to see her from behind where we get a nice booty shot and it's a little bit better than before it's a little more rushed than some of the earlier issues of this book which I completely get but whatever so in the past timeline, we're going to start here. In the past timeline, Selina is fighting the Joker, and it's like, I'm not like Batman, but I do like him, so I'm going to work with him to beat you. And I'm like, I thought you were cool, but you're not Joker. You're actually the worst. That's all that timeline is. There's nothing special to it. There's a couple like interesting takes on these characters I cannot wait to get into because I think it's just insanity. It's almost like Tom King trying to like pull the strings of, like, I can make something you've never seen before. But you're not. So the past timeline, Selena's like, I do like Batman. I'm going to be with Batman, even if that means, you know, going against my code, whatever. In the present timeline, I think we get some interesting stuff. Joker somehow knocks out the Phantasm and Batman, right? Big explosion, whatever. They're down, leaving him and Selena to fight. And in this fight, it is just Selena like, you don't get it. You, you literally just knocked out the one person that could stop me from killing you. So let's see what happens when we get to the fight. And as, as that fight like escalates, you see it ends when Selena just like talks over him and she kind of gives us this beautiful monologue, this beautiful idea, this amazing idea. It, she kind of presents it in the past and the present of what the Joker is. You know, everyone in Gotham City, the Penguin, the Riddler, Batman even, they're all crazy. We're all crazy people, man. But not the Joker. The Joker is sane. He knows exactly what he's doing. There's nothing, you know, ambiguous about him. He's just sane and he chooses to be an asshole, which is okay. What a great take you have here of the Joker where it's like, yes, that's I'm pretty sure literally everybody says that. For some reason, you reference Killing Joke a lot in this book. I get it because you want to have the scene where, like, Joker's... You need to fill up some pages and have the scene where Joker's telling a joke. And then Selena's like, you think I'm going to stand here and laugh in the rain at your stupidity? No. Like, let's just fight. I get it. So, I literally think this wants to feel like a Killing Joke type book, but it doesn't have the impact. And that sucks because it's just poorly written. And, like, the whole take where it's like joker was sane and she's telling her daughter this i'm like who gives a shit like you didn't kill a lunatic then you just kill a sane man as if that makes it better it's so so bad it is just so uninteresting and when you see selena literally about to kill him batman wakes up and stops her and we're just like cool there's no tension in that scene because we know he survives like she obviously goes back to being his lackey and that's another take i don't like there's a weird energy 
that Tom King's trying to display when it comes to the Selena and Bruce relationship. First off, I've been saying it for the past couple issues, he writes Bruce like he's a simping asshole who's just so desperately trying to get Selena to love him and be with him. And now in this issue, it kind of like turns the head on that and it's like Selena is so in love with Batman and the idea of like quote unquote fixing him that she literally becomes his simper and I'm like what the f what, what is happening here none of this lines up to what's happening in the other like issues of this book it's just so bizarre you know batman was so desperate to try to get selena now and now selena's like i'm just gonna stop being the person i am for him it's weird and it does not work for what this book's been trying to present itself as it's really bad actually it's so frustrating and so annoying and i know this book is called batman catwoman Batman is in two panels, so don't freak out if you don't see him in here. This, of course, is the only way Tom King could get to write his book about Selina Kyle, which is obviously his favorite character, because she is the only person here who has an arc. And when I say arc, I mean she goes from loving to lustful to angry to I'm the best person in the world. Like, I, I outsmarted Batman, I outsmarted Batwoman, I outsmarted the Joker and every other villain. It's so so frustrating <laughs> and it's just such a stupid read so the past timeline we did talk about the present timeline she's about to kill joker she doesn't the future timeline she literally just like gets apprehended by her daughter her daughter doesn't arrest her right away and then she's like you stupid kid you have no idea what's going on and they get into a fight she starts fighting her daughter you know 80 year old selena is able to take on helena in her prime when she's got all that tech and gadgets on her whatever and she's like you don't understand what's going on i had to cut his throat because he's a maniac but he's not a maniac he's a sane person doing weird stuff cool man what a pointless joke you're getting to and it and it ends on this really frustrating note where it's like dad's dead you don't owe him anything mom like what the hell do you think you're doing i'm not him and she's like oh my love my beautiful daughter don't you know by now Ugh, whatever and and <laughs> I will gi I will give him this. There's another like pseudo subplot in here where it's kind of setting up this weird sexual relationship or romantic relationship I should say about the Joker and Batman, which I really like that take because you could see these two, the only sane men in a world of crazy people coming together, the yin and the yang blending into one mixing bullshit whatever. That's a good take. Selena represents like the gray spot between the black and the white on those two opposing sides. I can see that completely. Like Joker even says, I could probably ha like have sex with him better than you could. Like I could, I could definitely do the due diligence with that man better than you could. And then like it ends with like, you two are the same. It's always been him. And it's always been you like two opposing ends, always coming to each other, always fighting each other as if they were in love, which we don't actually reveal if they're in love but this leads you in an ambiguous ending where it could be one of two things one batman and joker are the same guy because have we seen them on the same panel we haven't really like seen them together for a lot of it and maybe there is but two maybe joker's in love with batman and batman's in love with joker and selena's like the middle you know ingredient to this weird pyramid this love triangle i really hope that's the case if this turns out to be a stupid book about the joker and batman's sexual relationship it justified it for me because that is actually something interesting if not it's just an overcrowded mess that's trying to like do too much with its really cheesy dialogue telling a really stupid story about selena kyle that doesn't add anything putting this at christmas has not added anything to the story it's literally just been like oh now we can actually title the chapter something and clay man there is good moments in this book and then there's other ones that are just weaker than the rest like it's not rushed some of it does look rushed, I should say, but it's just like, I've seen you do better in earlier issues, so why does this one scene just feel so easy and, and just rushed and just lazy, and I don't really appreciate that. I'm getting sick of this book, and yes, we're good. we got two more issues left after this. This issue really added nothing. It's just three generations of Selena Kyle beating up somebody because she loves her husband or she doesn't? I don't know. Whatever. Bad takes on Joker, bad takes on Catwoman, bad takes on Batman. Tom King is a great writer. I love Human Target and Strange Adventures and Mr. Miracle, and I love the vision. Keep him away from the Bat family, and he can tell a good story. Even that Supergirl book is good. I'm not reading it, 
but it's good. Like he's actually telling good stories there, but this is such a mess and it's just so unorganized. And does he have an editor? I'm going to go back to the page actually while we're looking at this. Is there an editor on this book or is he just being told to do what he wants? Brittany Halzer is the editor and we got the assistant editor, Jillian Grant and the group editor, Chris Conroy. So three people are looking at this book and they're like, no, nah, this is good. Shame on all of you for letting this get by. What a complete and utter mess that serves no purpose. And unless it comes back in the end and we see a panel with Batman and Joker kissing, there's nothing worthwhile about this book. And, I, and don't read it. Please support Human Target over this shit. <laughs> oh, man, I'm, I'm so done. I'm done. So Batman Catwoman issue number 10. I'm going to give a 2 out of 10. It's getting lower each issue. Let's see if the finale can pull it off. So thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, and I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.